Hi and welcome to another video by Are You Arty Kids. Today we're going to look at observational drawing and if you were at a stage in your art education where you were looking at GCSE art, um, we might be looking at these assessment areas which is assessment area 3 which is recording from observation and also experimentation with media and process, probably e, uh, AO2. So in terms of our success criteria for this particular pencil drawing, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at shape, uh, we're going to be looking at proportions, detail, accuracy, tone, which is the level of light to dark through the greys, and we're going to look at texture and scale. So what I've got is a couple of resources here. So we've got the custard cream, the humble custard cream, which is fantastic from a drawing point of view because it's got great impact. It's got some really nice uh, light and darks, a uh, good range of tones in colour and in greys for pencil. And also it's got this beautiful detail as well, very, very intricate. So we're going to try and replicate all these different elements throughout the drawing that we've just talked about. So sometimes it's actually hard to do a greys pencil drawing from a colour image. So what we've got is we've got a full size black and white image here. And we've got a small version as well, which is a little bit more crisp with the detail. So that could look quite intimidating as a start from a drawing. So we need to just break this down and also just consider, you know, if you've ever had a custard cream in real life, what this is going to look like and feel like in terms of texture um, and also in terms of the raised elements as well and how we actually show that. So something which we can look at is just breaking it down. So like I've done on this black and white one here is I've just... Just to, I'm just going to rule over again for you, just to show you, is you could consider it in quarters, that's one way to approach it. Some of you might just have the confidence to crack on and draw it as it is, and that's absolutely fine. But if you need that little bit of extra confidence, in some ways, apart from the writing here, you've got these levels of symmetry. So you've got these flip symmetry, and you've got the rotation as well. So you could, if you get one area right, you could almost like rotate and flip that across the other three quarters of the actual drawing. So if you think about it in quarters term, what you could even do as well, once you get your basic shape done, is you could even fold up your resource sheet and just concentrate on drawing one particular quarter, which makes life a lot easier. So if you map it out, now obviously you're going to do this in pencil, but you've basically you've got your rectangle mapped out. And you could use a ruler to get that drawn out, but bear in mind they do have rounded corners and also a biscuit even though it's machine made is not you know if I just follow my felt tip line there it is not sort of pin sharp so yes you know you could start off doing that but then you are going to have to sort of age it a little bit so once you've got that basic shaping you could do some very light guidelines in quarters on your actual drawing and then obviously you've got this quartered already so you fold this down and then what you can do is you can think bottom corner and then you can actually concentrate just on this area here. So you could even then split that down again and again into quarters. And then you could split this down again and again into quarters, if that helps you in terms of getting the accuracy. And you think, right, OK, now I just need to concentrate on just what is happening in this particular quarter. So in terms of, you know, getting this particular shape in and we've got some of the lines going across there. OK, what happens in this quarter? Well, we've got the lines that go through and we've got this sort of shape that goes into here. And just break it down into small sections and that might help you get in your confidence. Uh, the other thing I want to say about this drawing is the fact that all of the detail area is raised. So if we think about the biscuit itself, if we think about it as having the top layer of biscuit, and then we have almost like the cream element, and then we have the other top area of biscuit, and we're looking at it from a side view here, this is the main element of the biscuit itself, but all this lovely detailing here is actually raised up. So if we're looking at it from a side here, all of this would be raised. So if you've got that raised, you've got to think about how you're going to actually shade that with tone. If we accentuate that into almost a hump, where that meets the actual plane of the biscuit itself, so if we were looking at any of this detail, imagine this is the raised part here, this is going to be where that raised part hits the flat plane, which is going to be your dark shading, again here, and this is closer to your light source. So this is going to be your lightest part of your grey shading. And then this is where we're going to work, where we're going to need our light grey tones nice and smooth. So you're going to have to get what we refer to as the gradiated shading technique of going light and dark. Now, obviously, I can't do that with a pen. But if I just show you, this is the sort of smooth shading we need to get from where we press really hard with whatever you're working with, even if it's just a HB 
press really hard and then without taking your pencil off try and get that really smooth light to dark so you know and obviously if you've got any striping in it like there go back up the line go back down up the line and you can see I'm holding my pencil a little bit further back because what I want is the side of the pencil rather than holding it in a traditional tripod grip which is maybe what you might write with in a, a lesson which is yes lots of control lots of tension in the hand but it's upright and it's scratchy and well if we get hold it further back we can see the side of the pencil nice and smooth it's going to help you with that shading technique so we don't want this yeah we don't want to see texture we don't want to see hatching and cross hatching or stipple or squiggle we want to see really smooth really nice gradated shading and that's what's going to be needed to raise those particular areas there a couple of other little techniques we can look at is obviously once you've got that into quarters then we've got to remember the fact that we've got this custard cream lettering in here as well so there is an arc on there so if we just actually draw this on with my marker you'll see contained within this diamond the arc is really nice and parallel so it's equidistant with the lettering just like obviously like a train track doesn't meet yeah this is nice and parallel so going within this inner diamond and then you can space out and if you're thinking well how am I going to space out to make that fit well on the bottom where that intersection goes you've got the E so I would actually draw the E in first and then the T of custard is actually intersecting the top line there and then get your letters to come off from that side. Okay, last thing I want to say is just about the way that the letter formations, the diamond and the detailing are drawn. If I just draw this with a marker and just show you what we don't want. So if we get a, a nice little filigree there, this is what we don't want. Yeah, we don't want single line because if you look at it, and you were to feel this from a physical point of view with a biscuit, this would be a ridge, a thick ridge, yeah? And we can see that, and we just talked about that with shading. So what you're going to have to do is, if you're doing it, yes, you can draw it like that, but then what you're going to have to do is double thickness everything. Yeah, double thickness everything. So the diamonds, double thickness lines. So C for custard, obviously it wants bubbling, double thickness. Because obviously what you need to do then is blend your tone either side of these because we don't have outlines in real life. We have edges. We have definition between one thing and another. So if this was a ridge of the diamond, yes, draw it in double thickness like that, just like you can see above. But then obviously what we need to do is we need to blend away. Now what we're doing is we're actually using negative space. So the actual double line thickness is the actual raised area and then what we're doing is we're blending away so we see an edge just like the double line but the way we formed it is by actually shading we have no outline now we've just got an edge so that's a bit of an intro and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another little section of the video because I've already drawn mine out I've already sectioned it up I've already got the detail mapped in really nicely I've got a couple of pencils that I'm going to need probably I've drawn this with a HB I've used a ruler just to get the proportions standard rubber and I've also got a few different pencils for some of the different greys. If you're lucky enough to have one of these, a blending stick, that's going to help you really get your smooth detail. It's a bit too small to start doing smudge detail with your finger. So that's coming next.
Oh, 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 oh,